a singing, there's gonna be a ball. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, tonight's the night they're flying high. When they get to the dance, you're gonna hear them cry. There's gonna be a ball. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Welcome to May the 4th. Today is Star Wars Day, yes. which is why I'm wearing my super cool guitar solo Solo. Shirt. And uh, to another Main Stage Music weekly live stream. Weekly. Ah, he did it. You might uh, wonder, hey, what happened to the couch? Well, I'll tell you what happened to the couch. It's right over there. Don't, but don't, yeah. ask, don't ask what happened to the couch. Well, actually, no. I mean, uh, we care about what you guys think and how we appear. And the mayor of Ray County came into the store the other day, and he said... Uh, Oh, yeah. He goes, I see the TV show that you're doing like from your basement in your living room or something. (laughs) And I'm like, no, it's actually done in our studio. And you think it looks like our basement? So I thought, you know what? If the mayor of Ray County didn't like, uh, I thought it was too casual. I don't want you guys to think that we're not being professional for you. We're gonna dial up the formality. Yes, formality. Just, just, I, you know, for for political appeal alone. Oh well, you know, I'm not into that stuff, but nonetheless. So, anyways, we were talking about what we need, um, what, hey, what we need to talk about this week, and I'll tell you, it's been a topic, a very popular topic at the store. When people come in, it's a popular refrain, I should say. Okay. And that is, I need a louder amp, <laughs> and I can't hear myself. I can't hear myself. And I think I need more of me in the sound system. But that sound guy doesn't listen to me Let's at church out. or whatever. Yeah. That guy, gonna, <laughs> that guy doesn't know what he's doing. Yeah. What does he know? But in, in, in all fairness... He might not know. He might anything. be an idiot. He yeah. might be your a sound guy. Might be terribly. This is a true <laughs> statement. But more times than not, okay, your sound guy wants you to sound good. Yeah, we want to turn as many knobs as there we have available, and if that is uh, your volume knob, we're happy to do it and just smoke those eardrums. Well, let me tell you another thing that I've learned about, um, especially church sound guys. Okay. They hear the term running sound, so they feel that if they're just sitting still, they're not doing their job because they feel they got to be running sound. So you see them back there just just a turning and a twisting every night. So they want a project, all right? So I can promise you this. They want to be busy doing something, and so they're not just sitting back, you know, wanting you not to be, to hear yourself. Or the poor young fella. Who's running audio, and uh, hey, I got a nephew who's great with computers. He ain't scared of all them blinky lights. We'll put him on the mixer. And then you have every conceivable adult in the room telling this poor kid who's learning what to do and trying to follow his instincts. He's getting separate instruction from everybody that walks by. You know what I do is I make all these things look like smiley faces. (laughs) Oh, okay. And then you end up with, I can't hear myself. So, you know, that being said, you know, let's talk about monitors, okay? Now, for the uninitiated, all a monitor is, is it's just a code word for another sound system for people who are on the stage for the performers, okay? So, obviously, you have your, what we use the term, FOH, or front of house speakers, or main speakers. Those are the ones for the audience, or for the people who are watching what you are doing. Then the monitors are for the people on the stage because if your speakers are placed properly, they shouldn't be behind you. They should be at the perimeter or in front of you, essentially, to the audience. So naturally, if you have ever been behind a speaker, okay, because it's not designed, it's baffled so that you don't hear it very much behind you. All right. So monitors are so that you can hear yourself. Now for musicians, this is paramount. This is so important because if you can't hear yourself or you can't hear the other people in your group, 
man, the wheels start coming off the wagon are real you, quick. Or you can't hear the train wreck that you're uh, spoon feeding to oh. the, the port. <laughs> My favorite meme is like the tidal wave coming at the, the person but sunbathing, and it's like <laughs> <laughs> your 7 p.m. sound check, <laughs> grandma's last dinner with the family. <laughs> <laughs> And somebody's just <laughs> fixing to get waylaid. Yeah, if you don't know what you're doing out front, if you're not monitoring effectively, uh, there there is some potential for some catastrophic effects. So you might think, um, well, tell me about these monitors I've heard you talk about. Um, now, with monitors, they come in all different shapes and sizes, just like your venues come in all different shapes and sizes. When I, of course, for the uninitiated, I had a guy tell me the other day, what's venue? Okay, a venue means the it's build and what you're playing in, okay? Well, maybe he was, or it could be an, uh, an Avid product for a really high-end mixer. Yeah, maybe yeah. he was looking for a $100,000 mixer. Yeah, maybe that was the case. But for people who don't know what a venue is, it's just my universal word for saying your church, your bar that you're playing in, your house party that you're DJing, whatever. That's the venue, the place that you're at, mm -hmm. okay? So depending on your needs... It might need, uh, a, you might have 15 people in your show. You might have one. You might have a huge room. You might have a small room. All of these things matter when picking out and understanding what kind of monitor you should use. Now, the most common monitor that you see all over the place, if you could, let's do a little picture in picture here, is the classic, what we use the term wedge, okay? The wedge is named after the shape, okay? It's basically just the same as a front of house speaker. Mm -hmm. It's just that they shape the box slightly different so that it sets at an angle on the floor. Now you might ask, why is it on the floor? You can take the picture down. Um, it's on the floor because you're a performer. If the mo speaker was in front of your face, it would be blocking you. Okay. Additionally, you're going to get, for anyone who's ever played with a microphone and a speaker, what happens if you point this microphone at the speaker? You get what's called feedback. Yeah. Okay. That means your feed, i.e. the microphone, is amplifying what the speaker is putting out and it's feeding back and creating a negative loop that usually comes out in a really um, energizing squeal. It's not energizing. It is horrendous, and nobody wants to hear feedback. So they put them on the floor at an angle so that hopefully you know you can't really hear behind it, or you, a microphone doesn't pick up behind unless it's a very specialized mic. It goes behind you so it's not picking up by the microphone, and it's on the floor so it's not detracting from the look and view of the people on the stage. Yeah, and, and do that little exercise the next time you're standing in front of a wedge. You know, step a foot ahead, two feet back, and figure out where the placement gets you the loudest signal to feedback ratio because it makes a uh, monitor placement is uh, very, very, very important. It is. Now, what he And don't, oh. don't, please don't, don't set it up and get it all nice and everything's beautiful and then the pattern of the microphone is just set and you've tuned the room and then come up there with some creative new boom stand stylings where now the microphones kick down this way and you're going to sing into it like this that all matters big it, time it all matters that sound is coming out of a cone with in a dispersion and the microphone is picking up in its cardioid hyper super cardioid pattern and if you start to overlap those goofy after you've already got it set up that is infuriating man i'm just going to use this show to just be pet peeves well we're both sound men we both have dealt with this amateurs amateur no we're both professional who we can but that being said we've both dealt with again the real cause of feedback people okay because the sound guy if he's got a modicum of training okay he's going to have his stuff set up so it doesn't feed back but it's the people who start going, I don't like the way this microphone is set up. And they start twisting and turning and trying to look creative and cool and whatever and messing up what that sound man has done. Now, I know we're getting slightly off the topic. I don't mean to do that, so I apologize. Um, yeah. 
But floor monitors are a nice <laughs> all-around um, solution because they are on the floor, and uh, of course they're going to fill the whole stage up with sound. But now here's the challenge: is that oftentimes, I mean, we're our musicians, so you're going to have amplifiers on stage. You're going to have many amplifiers. You'll have a bass amplifier, a guitar amplifier, a, maybe an acoustic amp. You might even have a, a acoustic player like a mandolinist or violinist where they may not have an amp, but they're just having it mic'd. Mm -hmm. Now, these are all things that you have to be considerate of and that are challenges that may require you to use a different type of monitor. I'll also say that there are people who have different um, levels of, and this is not a slight, by the way. I mean, this is a, a legitimate thing. There are people who can just hear better than others, okay? So if you have someone who is differently abled when it comes to their hearing, you have to consider those people when choosing a monitor because the solution is not to just turn it up. I mean, you could, but then it hurts the other people who are on stage who aren't having as much a challenge hearing as perhaps another person in the group. So I know these sound like a lot of things to consider, but it's all basic, um, pretty basic stuff. If you have someone who's having a harder time hearing, they need to have likely their own monitor just for them. Yeah, and, mo and mo really, really, most of this stuff is very simple. I mean, we're talking about things, and, and just tr just try try things, you know, try turning the wedge or, or getting, you know, ask whoever owns the wedge if they yeah. want you to do that. But, you know, try positioning the wedge and positioning yourself in the space that you're playing in on the stage and uh, those things tend to have an impact. I was going to tell you, you know, the, the little Sure Wireless I got from you that's got the on-off button? Yeah. Well, we had a performer who was, you know, all intermittently on stage. And every time she would come up, she would she would kick the mic down, straight down, so she could see the button to oh, turn it wow. on or off. And she was pointed straight down. Where the, and you'd, <laughs> whoop, whoop, I mean, it would just come right on. But uh, we, it was pretty pretty loud in the room, too. So we. By the way, I want to thank you guys for, uh, for watching and commenting. We do um, read your comments live on the air, and, um, and we are getting to some of the points that some of y'all are making. First of all, we want to thank our producer, Gibson Putt, for saying it's pretty horrendous for me to come up with a Wedge Antilles joke. Of course, it's May the 4th <laughs> be with you, even though I feel only a few might get it. You know what, Gibson? Keep on making those wedge Antilles. Thank uh, you for your contribution. Absolutely, Gibson. it's great. Um, another person here, uh, Daniel Ledford. Now, Daniel plays in church, okay? And he uh, pointed out that the Roland Cube monitor you have looks pretty cool. He has a Cube amp, a Roland uh, Cube amplifier, so I'd say that's a good piece. We are actually going to talk about the Cube monitor here in just a second because you're absolutely right, Daniel. It's a perfect piece. And actually, our friend Dale Prince just brought up, I hear my paycheck blowing the crossings through Dayton. Okay, back to your topic. <laughs> <laughs> and what he's referring to is, of course, our friends at Norfolk Southern who love to blow their uh, whistles when they cross by our studio Every here. Every Tuesday night, sponsor. Yeah, whistling. Yeah. And uh, also, I want to thank Grant Needham for tuning in. He said, mixing for people who don't know how to mix is always fun. Oh, isn't it? On the second turn me up... <laughs> On the second turn me up request, I start looking for what I can turn down. Subtractive mixing is where it's at. Yeah. You know what? That actually brings up a great topic. Okay. Now, first of all, Grant is uh, is mixing on a very high tech um, all digital setup. I believe they are using the Allen and Heath SQ. If I'm not mistaken, you can correct me. Now, the SQ is kind of a neat thing in that they've got the little iMix um, mixers. So. Um, we'll get to that in a little bit, but basically it allows the sound man to be hands off. In other words, if you don't like the way you sound in your mixer, that little box, yeah. you mix it. Yeah. Okay. Grab but that, those those are phone, buddy. those are fairly expensive and are reserved primarily for digital uh, mixers. So um, you can definitely get it done, but it's kind of a costly feature that's not available on all mixers. Additionally, um, my friend Dale, who commented earlier, is one of the um, he said GLD-112, close enough. My friend Dale is actually one of the people um, that inspired me on this particular episode. 
because Dale is a, plays mandolin at his church. And uh, his son-in-law is the one who mixes. Oh, nice. So, na- well, naturally he thinks that he's his son-in-law, which they're never good enough he's, for your he, daughter. Yeah, you know? he's, he's probably the worst sound guy <laughs> ever. The son-in-law <laughs> sound guy? Oh, I mean. Oh, my God. There's no pleasing. How? There's no pleasing him. Whew. So, but that being said, um, the poor poor boy got to get saved every Sunday. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> so I mean, that being said, though, Dale has uh, they probably have the monitors on the floor like this. So here's the challenge, people. That floor monitor is comfortably five to eight feet away. If and that's if it's fairly right in front of you, okay. Which means it's covering a fair amount of distance before it ever hits your ears. Additionally. How loud is your stage? Do you have a guitar player who you're miking their amplifier? Does he like to turn it up? What about a bass player? You know, what about a drummer, a live drummer? See, these are all things where if the stage is loud, then those monitors have to be cooking if you're going to hear what's coming out of them, which then to an untrained band, or I shouldn't say untrained, but to a band that's maybe undisciplined, they're going to play louder to overcome the sound that's coming from the monitors. Like the feedback loop, this creates also a negative loop of behavior. If you continue to turn your stuff up, people, you're going to have to have a louder monitor mix. If the monitor mix and the stage volume is too loud, the sound man is going to be like, I've got my faders for the front of house speakers off, and it's loud. Yeah. But the sound he's getting... Sounds kind of like this, but it's so loud that he doesn't dare turn up his main uh, faders because he's going to blow grandma right off the front pew. Yeah. You have to be very conscientious about volume, even though I know it is so fun when you're a musician to be loud. It is amazingly fun, all right? However, we have to think, is this performance for us or is it for our audience? I think most people would agree, and no matter any venue you're doing, the performance is for the audience. So we have to keep in mind that controlling your stage volume is paramount to getting a good monitor signal. Yeah, that's that's a painful one too because I'm I'm not one that prescribes easily to like, you know, Brad's definitely uh, for the audience, and I'm definitely a more selfish player, but I do at least understand. I'd like to I would like to say that I think that I understand that. If you, even if you want you to sound the best and you want you to sound the best going out, that you have to practice at least a little discipline over what the overall volume is. And it is so disappointing with guitar amps. We, I mean, this is guitar specific, but I mean, my buddy who's a keyboardist and accustomed to his Leslie, you know, he's, he loves that Leslie, loves that Leslie when it's cooking. Very few places can you get that less, unless it's outside, can you really get that thing up and going where it needs to be. So organ players have the same problem guitar players do. And you want that sound to get up to where the amps are cooking, the tubes are cooking, and, and it's just it's just hard to do. So it's, what's it's the hard ch- to do and monitor properly. Well, so you also have to think about what the average, let's not put that picture up just yet, what the average um, sound system or sound layout or performance look like at, let's say, uh, a lot of venues where you might have multiple singers, okay? Whether that's a church or a secular venue or whatever. Oftentimes, the (coughs) sound man or the design will put two or maybe four monitors lining the perimeter of the front of the stage. Then they will have however many singers you have standing right in front of those monitors with their microphones. And behind those human baffles will be the musicians. So you can already understand that you have this barricade between the people, the musicians who need to stay in time with each other, and the monitors that are blowing this sound that they use to keep in time with each other. The people that are singing are like, oh, I can hear real good. It sounds fine. I'm sure it does. You're standing right in front of the monitors. But for everyone else, it's a challenge. So this is where the more me comes from. And um, now that being said, go ahead and put up that next uh roland has offered this product right here it's called the cube monitor now i know that we got a big picture here but really this monitor is only about 10 inches wide 10 inches high it's a cube 
it is so small that it actually threads right on top of a standard little mic stand. But this little guy has a coaxial speaker layout. That's just fancy talk for the tweeter is in front of the woofer. Okay, so um, they compact a full range speaker into a very small box. So that being said, you can take the you can take that picture down now. Thank you. Um, you can take the send from your auxiliary right into this small cube monitor, and you can bring it close to ear level, and at a lo considerably lower volume than a floor wedge, get a very pleasing and crisp, loud monitor sound that will help you stay in time with um, what you need to hear. Additionally, they're not expensive and they're a lot less volume, which is going to keep your overall volume controlled. So this is the cube monitor they were, he was talking about. Additionally, you can link multiple of these small powered monitors together so they can be a one auxiliary mix. So if your mixer only has maybe one extra mix, auxiliary output I should say, this is fine. You run that auxiliary to this one and then chain it together so that the other musicians on stage can hear the same mix. Hey, it's better than nothing, right? Ideally, everybody gets their own little separate mix, but here in reality land, you, you take with what you got, right? And this right here is a great solutions product to getting a good, crisp, loud signal in a very small footprint that doesn't detract from the look that people are, um, you know, you're getting looked at when you're up on stage. So um, this right here is a way, and it also keeps your volume down, okay? Um, so this is something that is really helpful. Additionally, these monitors are effectively like a PA system on a stick, mm -hmm. okay? They actually have a microphone input, a uh, line level input, so they can be used for other things. So uh, we've sold them to people who just, uh, they want to call up bingo numbers, okay? Did you, did you put the, the, did you put one of those, the smaller... Like the Mackie, did you put a picture of that? On oh, yeah. There? Here's another. Uh, so yeah, Mackie is another uh, brand yeah. right here. Now, the Mackie is different than the Boss or the Roland um, in one uh, key feature. It is tilted. So the Mackie actually sits back at about a 30-degree tilt, which means you can mount it at a lower height mm -hmm. than the cube, which is horizontally uh, mounted. Now... Um, there is a difference in the performance of that because of the slight tilt. I've noticed that they're a little less stable on a round base mic stand. Mm. So they do tend to, uh, to wobble a little bit more. And if, um, well, let's just say if you want it to get it closer to your ear, like the Roland, you can get it up almost to ear level and it shoots right at you. So you're saying there's like a, there's a Pentecostal model and then there's like a <laughs> charismatic oh, contemporary no. model. Well, I'll tell you, everybody likes to hear regardless of their denomination. But that being said, if you set this at a, you know, let's say ear level, because it's tilted, the signal does tend to kind of shoot over you. So, um, hey, but, you know, it's one of these things where you really need to see both and see where it works. The... Um, the Mackie now is def definitely designed for, let's say, the solo singer-songwriter, okay? You keep your monitor low. You can mount a boom stand on the top of this and have it right there on your singer, on your column. So it's a really uh, well, intuitive design. Well, you can run your design. mix there and throw an XLR out the house, and then you, you're kind of driving the whole show, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, it, it's really a – it additionally has a neat little uh, master input on the back. So although there are two mic level inputs on the front, you have a master input on the back, which make it an extremely good choice for people like Grant who might have the small um, monitor mixers on a stand. Mm. So it makes an all nice uh, little column right there. You can take that picture off there, son. Um, we got some more comments coming in. Again, thank you guys, and feel free to chime in with your experiences. Um, first of all, our friend Daniel said he inherited what I was talking about at his church when he was assigned to the sound room. Louder monitors than the house. Here's another thing that, unfortunately, sound men, we should have a National Sound Man Day. Because, you know, let me tell you something. Poor sound guys, they get all the blame when it doesn't go right, but none of the accolades when it goes perfect. Yeah, and I wonder if that's just the thing. You know, it's, it's one of those deals you, you don't learn for a while, and then I don't know if once you've learned it, you just feel like it's not within you, like, 
tell somebody the difference, but I mean, if you have a monitor on stage, 1100 watt powered wedge, it's creating sound. You've got 20 lovely people in the choir creating sound. You've got choir mics hanging out of the ceiling, coming down about 10 feet away from the people. So how much volume, measurably, will the choir produce versus those 1,000 watt cabinets sitting on the floor? And I'll tell you the answer. As soon as the monitor wins, then you start getting, the mic starts hearing the monitor better, then you're gonna be fighting, fighting that, that balance back and forth. And it's very easy for those monitors, keyboards, bass, the preacher, whoever it is, preacher especially, mm -hmm. he wants to be heard, be clear, be present out front, hot in those wedges, going straight to the choir mics, going straight to any of the nice condensers you've got on acoustic pianos or other instruments, and then here it comes right back at 1,100 watts. It's it's crazy. I mean, it's but it's all, it's you know what, it's really horse sense if you think about it. Just, you don't want your mics pointing at monitors. And if your monitors are too loud, they're going to get picked up by the mics. So it's just, it's kind of a fa finite balance. You need to find what the right thing is. That's why you have solutions products like what we're showing you to keep the volume of those monitors down. Yeah, and last thing. So with these point source, you know, you're thinking they're still much closer to you than a wedge on the floor. But your mouth is still much closer to the diaphragm of the microphone, and you get that proximity effect, right? Mm -hmm. So you can compete with this little pole-mounted wedge because you've got the benefit of distance on the mic. But just keep that in mind. If you're a back singer and you've got a close wedge, now that wedge is fighting with what your own diaphragm and vocal cords can do, and I can tell you who's going to win. A uh, Chinese Class D amplifier oh, okay. is going to win. Now, we also have some people who have used both of these monitors chiming in. Brian said he uses the Cube as a stage monitor at church for his acoustic guitar, and he hides it behind the piano. So, again, you don't even see it. It's very small yeah, and smart. easy to find. And uh, Grant piped back in. I guess he, he must have some characters at his place. He said, just don't point it at the Cube at the front of house. Make it easy on your sound guy. Who's pointing their monitors back at the front of I don't even want to go there. Um, now, Daniel's piped back in. He said he's also tried these Mackies. Come on, Daniel. And you can uh, just put delay on that bus and, and, oh yeah, and line the monitor up <laughs> about, what, 12 to 15 milliseconds back, and then they'll, they'll says, try and figure out what He says out they got the, two people in their church band who does that. That throws the wedges throws back Throws the wedge first. back at the front of house. Well, just delay compensate them, and you won't I guess. get the mud. There you go. And then Dale, uh, pipe back in, cube may be good for me to take my mandolin mic, take it from the church system, and isolate my mandolin through a cube. Um, you get any, I wonder if they get a bunch of phasey mess. But Daniel, you get a bunch of phasing when you've got a bunch of different size speakers and wedges producing roughly the same sound as other wedges in the back. If, if you set those things at weird angles and they're essentially maybe. producing this, they can now phase Dale, out. Now, Dale, here's the only thing I'm going to tell you or warn you about doing that. Don't plug your man. You can plug your mandolin right into the, the small cube monitor if you're just playing around or if you're doing a small uh, little performance. But... Plug your mandolin in to the snake, into the church uh, or the main house mixer, and let him give you monitor through the monitor. If you plug your mandolin right into the cube, then you're, yeah, you're going to sound great through it, but then you won't be heard through the front of house sound system. Because, again, you're isolating yourself just to this small little speaker, so you'll be over there, and, oh, I sound so good. Everyone else is going... Is he even on? Yeah. So don't do that. Plug what? your mandolin into the mixer. He's saying that he doesn't bounce out of the... He's, he can't hear himself enough when he plugs his mandolin in. So the issue is he can't hear enough of him. He needs more me. That brings us to our next thing, okay? <laughs> and I'm going to tell you guys, this is our personal favorite. There they are. In-ear monitors. Now, in-ear monitors are just a fancy way of saying earbuds or headphones, or whatever you choose to use. But now you have the drivers, in the case of these, quite a few. These are pretty impressive these right are here. Three, three drivers. Yeah, um, the 535s. This is a, what, $350 set of... Uh, no, you should tell people about this, man. This is a... $500 set. $550 was what the 535s were. They came out with Bluetooth 1s. They had BT 1s. Mm -hmm which were, for most recorded content, 
like on your can, phone or can whatever. Can be yeah. a little sketchy if you're watching compressed stuff or just junk like TV mess. It's not that big a deal, but for good audio over Bluetooth, high, higher res stuff, it was bad. They just came out with the BT2, so now you've got microphone, Bluetooth, battery, three driver sure headsets on a cable. Used to be 550. They added the Bluetooth. You can get it for 350. 350 from your They're local sale, sure right. dealer. We got some coming in, but They're some awesome. already spoken for. And you for. can buy a cable. Uh, the cable to go into your wireless pack or even hardwired in is mm-hmm. like thirty dollars. Something like it's not expensive. So for three hundred eighty bucks, you get five thirty fives with Bluetooth for your phone. They're super pro. They come with a little cutesy pack to tote them in. Different phone plugs. I am. They're awesome. But now I'll also say Man. it's it, it's a commitment, okay? So this isn't the kind of thing if if you can't keep good sunglasses. If you're a guy who only <laughs> plays American strats and you won't play a Squire strat, there you go. And this is cost of a Squire strat. Yeah. I don't want to hear no mess about your amp not <laughs> sounding right because it'll sound just freaking fine. Now here's what I'm gonna say though. Let's get this. So um, I use Shure in ears. Jamie's got them. You should have them. These are effectively the best earbuds you've never tried yet okay they are the industry standard when you're talking about touring groups okay so when you go on stage and you're like man he had something around his ears i don't it was these this is what they had on their ears now you might think why why would i want to listen to headphones if i could have a stage wedge on there it's very very simple could you imagine that how good that stage monitor would sound if you could shrink it down to a tiny little thing and stuff it right in your ear. You can just gaff tape it to your shoulder. There you go. It's going to sound great. Additionally, you know what can't happen with earbuds? Feedback. So if you're someone who has an issue with mic squealing, people don't know where to put them, da-da-da-da, not going to happen with earbuds. Uh, and ear fatigue overnight when you've got wedges, if you're in an outdoor space and you've got 15 inch EAWs up there that are blasting. You got a headache and you, you're just numb at the end of the night. This is limited. So poor Bob set. Seeger, just think of that line, you know, echoes of the amper, amplifiers ringing in his head. If they had earbuds back in the 70s, Bob wouldn't have written the song Turn the Page, right? Or at least that line in it. But now that being said, earbuds are without a doubt, or in ear monitors are the best way of going. When you get a quality set like this, it acts as an ear plug. So you are truly plugging your ears, and you can hear very little of the outside world. Yeah, and they come with the foam tips that have varying degrees of, you know, less isolation if having, you know, a lot of the ambient stage sound in is one of those things. Like, I, you know, if, if I completely isolate, you get, like, inner ear mess, get weird stuff, you start getting not moving around right. So you can put the foam in that lets other sounds in on the side. And I'll say about that, you, you said the best. Uh, I and other people have rejected the idea of isolating yourself in that way. One, it's a trust thing. You're letting someone else, if you're not mixing, you're trusting that someone else is going to mix so you can hear the band. And you're used to hearing bass and drums and keys and your nice singer and everything the way they go, and the horn sections and the, and the go-go girls and all, <laughs> all the full band. But there's a reason the market went this way. It's... It clearly solves more oh, of the man. problems than doesn't, and so it, it's an adjustment, and and we understand that. And I've had to, I've had to, and people learn will say, I don't myself. want something in my ears, and and so on. But let me tell you something: it uh, when you see the benefit, or when you hear the benefits and feel the benefits, it's hard to go back. Additionally, with a stage wedge. It has a dispersion rate and an area that's going to be hot and cold, just like any speaker. So if you move around on stage or get moved from one area to another, you're going to hear the monitor, then you're not going to hear the monitor, right? So you can also get what's called wireless in-ear monitors. They're effectively um, a wireless microphone type of system. You have a transmitter that then you can buy as many as you'd like receivers. So if you can go ahead and get a picture up there... um, Hmm. Oh, yeah, well, there's that. So this is the transmitter right here at the bottom, okay? And that would just feed your auxiliary send from your mixer. The and then, over here. Yeah, and then the body packs right here tactfully clip to the your belt or whatnot, and you feed the earbuds from them. You have then a, a individual volume control, 
and you can move anywhere you want. And I'm not joking, easily in a 500 foot radius. It's crazy. You could be in the other room and you will hear exactly in perfect high definition, crystal clear um, no lat- audio. No latency. No, it's, it's amazing. Now, are these, some people will complain, these are expensive. Well, it costs about $799 thereabouts to get a transmitter and a single receiver or the cost of one good quality powered monitor. But then each additional body pack costs about $300, which is about half of what one good powered monitor costs. So as you can see, it ends up being less expensive if you commit to them fully. Additionally, you can teach people a lesson here. Okay, a lesson about personal responsibility. If you have someone that tears up your floor monitor and they go, oops, well, that's that. But if they tear up their own earbuds, hey, buddy, that's on you. All right. So if you're in a band, let's say you're in a four piece rock and roll band and you want to go in ears. Great idea. Um, Each guy buys his own body pack. Mm. Boom. I forgot my body pack. Well, sorry, Skeeter. You don't hear today, you know. (laughs) <laughs> or, <laughs> I, I done sat on my earbuds and tore them up. All right. Well, then guess what? That's on you, buddy. Bust them AirPods out, big but boy. But I'll tell you, man, it's like uh, it gets really fatiguing if you're a guy in a band who buys all the sound equipment. You ever notice how people don't take care of your stuff? They take care of their stuff, but they don't take care of your stuff. So this is the kind of thing right here that will teach members of your band a little personal responsibility because they'll start learning how to use this stuff. I went to load the gear up. I got my amp in the car. It started to rain a little bit. I threw a Walmart bag over yours. Yeah. I reckon it's all right. (laughs) Now, here's another thing. This little box right here is made by a company called Rolls. And Rolls is very well known for making all sorts of solutions-based audio products. This is just called a personal monitor amp. What you do is you would run the auxiliary send um, like you would run to a powered monitor or to that um, wireless monitor set. And you can plug it right into this little box. Then you can mount this little box on a mic stand tactfully so you don't have to move around too much. Then you plug your earbuds right into the front and you have your own individual level. So that's a really neat little feature if you didn't want to commit to the amount of money that um, a wireless set would be. So this little guy is less than 50 bucks. And um, so in a church type of setting, this would be something that maybe for all your musicians, you could have one mounted on each microphone stand. Okay, That way, when they come into church, they can put their earbuds in, plug it right in, and boom, it's right there ready for them to go. And then everybody would have their own little mix right in their ear. You'd have little to no stage volume, and boom, a lot of problems solved. This is another product that's similar to that. It's made by Behringer, okay? and this one's called the P2. It's basically a small... Um, belt clip that you would clip on your belt and the bottom here has an XLR uh, input so you would run the output of your auxiliary send right into that input and then the top of it has a uh, input for your headphones or your earbuds and a single volume control so again this is a a similar uh, version of what we were just looking at except it uh, doesn't offer as many features and just clips to your belt but if you didn't want, like the idea of having something on a little mic stand or whatnot, this would be another option for you. Um, so, you know, that being said, it's, um, it's definitely, um, you know, I'm just checking the comments. I'm not losing my thought here. Oh, another May the 4th be with you day or a comment from our friend Gibson. He goes, the Han Solo singer songwriter. <laughs> but anyways no, you know what I like that he's sharpening his one liner skill I don't know where he gets his one liner talent but I think it might be from my side I think he's head. using our show to shed material for his show Whoa! did you know that Gibson Putt who is the producer here of this show has his own show called The Big Screen where he uh, reviews movies because if you don't, you need to go to Facebook and like and follow The Big Screen, it's called. And uh, he reviews movies and TV shows that they like and so on. Okay, so you can get the picture off of there. 
in short, you know, with monitors, monitors are in incredibly important. And I know the easiest route is usually the one that's going to cause and wreak the most havoc. But with a little bit of planning, coming to obviously main stage music and discussing the issues that you're having, we can tailor something that's going to work best for your needs. Whether you're a rock and roll band, a singer, songwriter just by yourself, maybe a two-man group, or a big church band. A uh, Han Solo singer. A uh, Han Solo singer. <laughs> um, but there is really something designed for anyone. But here is the key with monitoring. Keep your stage volume as low as you can because that will allow the main, you know, the guy who's doing the mixing to mix for the audience, which let's face it, that's why you're here. Whether it's your music or your message, you're there for the audience, not for yourselves. The monitor is a very important aspect of it because you need to hear what you're doing in order to deliver that message or that music. But understand that if you're too selfish in how you do it, you're not going to have a good time and they are not going to be hearing as good a product as you would like them to. Or said another way, if, you're, if you solve your monitoring issues such that you really enjoy what you're hearing, the likelihood that other people will enjoy what you're hearing is higher as well. So in short, definitely think about your monitoring situation. Realize that there's not a one-size-fits-all uh, solution for that. And then just try to tailor and think a little bit. A little bit of planning goes a long way. Think about how you can better, you know, your monitoring. Now, another little thing I want to let you guys know about is, so today is May the 4th, be with you. But dun, 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 um, dun. <laughs> this Saturday is 5-8, which is the same number as the iconic Shure SM58 microphone. Main Stage Music has been selected as just one of a couple of venues in the entire state to host SM58 Day at Main Stage Music Live. So this will be, um, we're going to have five very talented artists from our area playing and singing on SM58 microphones. This will be a live streamed event, so you can watch and enjoy the music and so on, or if you're so, uh, if you feel okay, and by the way, we do take precautions. We have sanitizer and so on, um, but you can come down and watch the event live, where Shure has sent a factory representative to talk about the microphones and the product that Shure makes. Additionally, he'll probably have some factory swag, and everybody likes swag. And you know what? We're probably going to bring a barbecue grill and do uh, some hot dogs and drinks and blah, blah, blah. Make it festive. Make it fun. And just be a cool community event only at Main Stage Music that you can come out, check out some live music, support some local artists, maybe learn and get maybe a discount, I don't know, on some cool Shure microphone stuff. And ask um, our factory rep anything you want. Um, additionally, tomorrow is... Cinco de Mayo. Hey. And guess what? Me ay, and ay, Jamie, ay, 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 ay. me and Jamie are going to play some music at El Toro restaurant in Dayton, Tennessee. Oh, it's Jamie and I. Are going to I have my uh my editor in chief over there. And um grammar, I ain't for it. <laughs> yeah. So anyways, um and we're going to be playing some music. So we've never really played music together. Uh we don't really play gigs that often, but a good time is assured. There will be tequila there yes. present. El the Toro event. Restaurant in Dayton, which, by the way, I've been to all the Mexican restaurants in Dayton, and they're all excellent, but El Toro absolutely kills everybody when it comes to the street tacos. Street tacos, man. Oh, my gosh. Spice, spicy green sauce. you got to be careful, man, because El Toro Street Tacos will have you waking up at 2 o'clock in the morning, like scratching your neck, wanting more. Yeah. I mean, they're they're awesome yeah so if you guys aren't doing anything um tomorrow night and looking for something fun to do come on out support local um you know restaurant on cinco watch a couple of dudes play some music enjoy some fun and so on but then don't forget to come on out to main stage music on the 8th for sm58 day where we'll be featuring all sorts of cool artists and if you can't make it you can watch it live on youtube and facebook or facebook whichever you choose again thank you guys so much and we'll see you next time